Hey guys, Galen here. And for this week's YouTube video, I wanted to talk about the D-dimer. The D-dimer is a lab value that you get. So you draw serum from the patient, so that's blood, and um, it evaluates for any blood clots in the body. Um, usually I'm getting a D-dimer when I have a low um, pretest probability of them actually having um, a pulmonary embolism or a blood clot in their legs, um, it's kind of more of a rule out factor for me because if their well score is greater than four, then you're just going to want to get a CTA of their chest. But if it's less than four, but it's still kind of on your differential, um, you can grab a D dimer. And if it's negative, it's pretty good probability. Um, it has a good specificity that there is no blood clot in the body. Um, but in some cases, uh, patients have higher D-dimers for whatever reason. A couple people, um, anyone with infection is going to have a high D-dimer. Anyone that has cancer is going to have a high D-dimer. Pregnancy is going to have a high D-dimer. Um, and then your D-dimer actually also increases by age as well. So for this YouTube video, I wanted to talk about the different D-dimer thresholds for age and for pregnancy. So let's get started. So like I said before, there are different D-dimers for different age groups, and it's been well studied with age, not as well studied with pregnancy, and I'll get to that in a second, but with age, there is an age-adjusted D-dimer that you can upload into MD-Calc, again, I use MD-Calc for this, and see if that D-dimer is significant or not. So um, I think it starts at age 50. So if your patient is greater than age 50, then their D-dimer might be a little different. And um, you just plug in their age and you plug in the D-dimer result that you got from them. And um, md Kike will tell you if that D-dimer is above the threshold, below the threshold, and the likelihood that there's actually a blood clot in their body. Um, so I find that very helpful in my decision-making tools. And I always chart the age-adjusted D-dimer threshold because the D-dimer may be elevated in that patient, but the age-adjusted D-dimer is not. So I like to chart that in my patients um, that are a little more elderly and I have different D-dimer thresholds from there. Now, when it comes to pregnant patients um, and you're worried about a DVT, this has been a hot topic for many years as pregnancy does increase your rates of DVTs and pulmonary embolisms. <clears throat> so um, when you're thinking about DVTs in pregnancy, um, the D-dimer in a pregnancy natural, naturally rises with each um, semester. One study showed that in the second semester, 22% um, of those patients um, had a normal D-dimer, only 22% in the second semester. And then in the third semester, no one had a normal D-dimer level. Um, and this just goes along with the natural progression of the D-dimer level going up with pregnancy and then a slow decline in the antepartum period. Um, it's not been well studied in the threshold values um, for D-dimers in pregnancy um, has not been agreed upon. Um, some studies have shown that uh, higher thresholds, although in pregnancy, would be better, just like there are higher thresholds as you age. Um, one study proposed, I think 750 is the upper limit of normal for a D-dimer in first trimester. 1,000 is the second trimester. And then 1250 is the third trimester. Um, and that's just proposed. There's been um, limited studies on this so far, um, but more to come out. But just keep that in the back of your head if you are going to use a D-dimer in pregnancy, um, because most of the time in the third trimester, it's not going to be normal. So you're gonna to wanna to think about those thresholds and use good clinical decision-making and also use um, the other resources that you can have. Um, getting an ultrasound of your lower extremities never hurt anyone. Um, so that's that. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next week. Oh.